Hello students. In this video, we are going to discuss a property of matter that is particles of matter attract each other. So this can be explained through activity that is activity 1.7 and 1.8. Now let us discuss the activity 1.7. It is a textbook activity. Let us read out the activity here. Then we have to perform this activity. Take an iron nail, a piece of chalk and a rubber band. Try to break them by hammering or cutting or by stretching. So in order to do these activities, let us take out the things which we are required for this activity. That is, we need the nail, that is the iron nail, piece of chalk and a rubber band. So in order to hammer this one, we need a hammer. So our requirements are here that is hammer, iron nail, chalk pieces and even the rubber band. Now we will be performing the activity with the things available here. So first we will take iron nail. Now we have to cut or hammer this iron nail. So better we can hammer on this iron nail. So hammer it for some time. What we can observe that iron nail not breaks. Even though it can get flattened, but the iron nail not get breaks even we hammer it for some time. So what it shows thus, it shows that the particles of iron are held together by greater force. So here, as after hammering for a long time also, it will not break. So it shows that the particles of the iron, because iron is a matter, and these particles are held together by a greater force. That's why it will not break easily when we hammer it on. Next, when we try with the rubber band, the rubber band, when we hammer it with the a hammer we can found that uh, we can stretch the rubber to a larger length without breaking this is due to the elastic property of rubber band similarly when we hammer the chalk pieces uh, we can find out that uh, it can be broken down into the smaller pieces or we can get powder of it so the chalk pieces get powdered on hammering this is, we can conclude that the force of attraction is weaker in the chalks. So, the breaking them into the pieces is easier. So, what we can conclude here, because it is easy to break up the chalk pieces, so it shows that the force of attraction between the particles in the chalk are, have weaker attraction. That's why it can break up into the pieces very easily. So we have compared here the force of attraction between the particles of these substances by hammering on it. So we have, we were tried to break up by hammering or even we can cutting by or even stretching. So what we can see that our conclusion comes like this as in the activity 1.6, we saw that the force of attraction between the solid, liquid and the gases is different. This experiment focuses on the force of attraction between the different solids. Here, all the particles are solid. That is the iron, the rubber band and even the chalk pieces. So, all these pieces are actually are solid. So here the force of attraction between their particles are different. So in the iron nail, the force of attraction is highest and the force of attraction in the chalk is lowest. So the breaking them into the pieces in the case of chalk is easier but it is difficult in the case of iron. And what about the rubber band? Because rubber contain a long chain of uh, molecules uh, that is linked to each other by a bond. 
that we'll be going to discuss it in the further classes so this long chain stretch gives them a high elasticity so that is why the rubber band have a elastic nature so what we can conclude from this activity that um, even though these all substances are solid but the force of attraction between their particles are different now let us perform the activity 1.8 activity 1.8 take some water in a container try cutting the surface of water with your fingers were you able to cut the surface of the water let us see so take water in a container and try to cut with your fingers now it is very easy we can easily cut the water using the fingers so you have noticed this one if a water is there in the container and if you try to cut it with your fingers easily you can cut it that means easily you can insert your hand or the fingers in the water but try to do with a solid thing if you try to cut the solids like if you want to get insert your hand into the solid objects like a wooden piece it is not so easy and even when you try this in air if you wave your hand in the air it is very easy to cut the air using your fingers so what it shows here that the three different objects we are considering here that is we are considering solid objects liquid objects and the gases so here we can say that in the case of solid because it is not easy to cut it that it because the particles of the solid have a greater force of attraction but that is due to we can say that the particles are tightly packed as here there is a greater force of attraction between the particles in the solid that is seen here so that is why we here can see that the particles are tightly packed in the case of solids but when you look at in the case of liquid as we can easily cut the surface of water with your fingers that means the force of attraction here it is intermediate that is what you can see in the case of um, liquids uh, the particles are not so tightly packed that is uh, you can see in this picture but what about the case of air as we can very easily wave our hand in the air that is because the force of attraction between the particles is weakest in the case of gases so when you look at the picture here in the gases the particles are loosely packed that means there is much enough spaces between the particles in the case of gases so we can say that here the force of attraction is weakest in the case of gases and it is highest in the case of solid and it is intermediate in the case of liquids so here in the cases of gases because there is a weak force of attraction we can say that here the particles are loosely packed so very important point so what we can conclude from this one that in the solids particles are tightly packed in the cases of gases the particles are loosely packed and it is intermediate in the case of liquids so here we have discussed the property of matter that is particles of matter attract each other that we have seen that the force of attraction between the particles and that is highest in the case of solid and it is lowest in the cases of gases so we can list out the different properties of matter which we have learned in the previous activities that is particles of matter are very small particles of matter have spaces between them particles of matter are continuously moving and the particles of matter attract each other so these are the four properties of matter which we have learned in this video and also in the previous videos 
so these are the very most important points which you need to remember so in this activity that is in the activity 1.7 and 1.8 we can conclude that particles of matter attract each other so the further details will be discussing in the next video so this is all about this video have a nice day